Hello. Now then, I don't know about you, but I find all the gajillion pieces of information that are coursing through the world at any one time concerning nutrition, healthy living, and the proper way to live your life, supposedly, all rather interesting and fascinating and even useful, but after a while, a little bit overwhelming. I tend to start off all perky, think, yeah, I'm going to do that. Oh, I'm definitely going to do that. But then after a while, I think, oh, I'm not sure. Oh, I question, I doubt. And then I just pour a Manhattan and have a packet of hula hoops. It's not really the best way to start my day. Ideally, I'd like to create some kind of instruction manual for my healthy self, but I'm not quite sure where to begin. Common sense suggests it's got to be more than just food and exercise. It must be genetics and the lifestyle I lead, uh, the mental attitude I adopt, even my geographical and financial access. So I'm going to try and distill all the stashes of information and rampaging thoughts I have in my head around this subject down into an initial starting point. And from there, I'm going to start my investigations and explorations proper. Hmm. I think trying to sift through all the detritus in my head to find these nuggets of gold may take quite a while. So what I'm going to do is give myself a five minute limit. And in that time, I'm just going to jot down all the key words that come into my head around the subject. Let's see what happens. So we have low fat, high fat, insulin, smoking, superfoods, metabolic syndrome, healthy snacks, weekly budget, five a day, 10 a day, guilt, time, cooking from scratch, caffeine, processed food, sugar, carbohydrates, fiber. Family, knowledge, genetics, vitamin D, willpower, good fats, bad fats. Oh, already terrifying. <sighs> I shall now go and have a lie down for a while and cry a bit, I think, too. Right, I'm back. And as Alison Moy would say, I'm all cried out. So how am I supposed to juggle all those things? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is jettison all the pointless stuff, all that celebrities' diets and model six packs and comparison and perfection. It's all nonsense. And if it's in your head, get rid of it, too. It's embarrassing. It's even in here. The rest of it I'm going to have to organise into some sort of manageable system. Otherwise I'm in danger of ping-ponging between them all, just spending five minutes on each thing and hardly achieving anything at all, or worse still, ricocheting between them all, terrified and racked with guilt that haven't achieved anything at all. It's like a dog chasing its tail. And none of that is going to do the health of my mind or my body any good at all. <laughs> Ah, and you fear, and you guilt, out. Ah. Ah. See, I feel better already. I always think it's a bit like spinning plates, where you have to come in and give each stick a little swizzle to prevent the plates from crashing to the floor. This clearly leads to madness. So I've created a visual to remind me of the key elements that I need to understand and balance so that I can begin to establish my new world health order. So as a starting point, I've used the established barriers to healthy eating and living, uh, which I headlined as biological, economic, time, social and psychological. I've also added knowledge in as an overarching barrier because I think that really is key to all the other five and then just other key words really all to do with either the body or the mind things to keep in mind things to uh, pay attention to as uh, as I establish this new health order um, I'm sure there'll be lots of other things that'll be added there'll be things taken away but it makes me think of the phrase everything in moderation but then I wonder if it should actually be everything in balance so as a final thought, if I am able to create some kind of blueprint for this vital, healthy way of living and being, body and mind, the question really will be, will I be able to do the things that I need to do to achieve it? And ultimately, will I want to? We shall see.